This presentation in Climate and Earth 401 is about the material derivative. We wrote the vector momentum equation like this, where we're looking at momentum per unit mass, du dt, acceleration, is equal to a pressure gradient term, a viscosity term, a gravity term, and a Coriolis term. This is one simplified form of the momentum equation. And now what we're going to do is to consider in detail what this du dt is. In an earlier presentation, I talked about the Lagrangian and the Eulerian points of view. Where that comes to have a visible impact on the equations and how we do the analysis and the investigation of dynamics is in the representation of du dt, or really in the representation of the time derivative d by dt. And you will notice here that a d that is not in italics, a d in the normal case, and that generally represents the full time derivative and the nomenclature of using a small delta, the Greek letter, will represent a partial derivative. So with the introduction here of the material derivative, we need to start paying attention to whether or not we are looking at what we might call a full or a partial derivative, especially with respect to time. So I'm going to use this field of the 2005 surface temperature anomaly, which is a difference from a long-term average. I'm going to place a coordinate system here, an xy coordinate system. I'm going to choose a point x0 and y0, and I'm going to take my idealized parcel, which is this black square, and that's going to originally be at x0 and y0, and I'm going to move that parcel to a new position which is displaced delta x in this direction and displaced delta y in this direction. The question becomes, what is the change? What is the change? Let's say this is temperature. This is a temperature field. The question becomes is, what is the, the temperature? change? What is the temperature difference? How does temperature change? For this derivation, we're going to rely upon the Taylor series expansion. That expansion generally is that f of x is equal to the function at a specific point, x0, plus the derivative d by dx, x minus x0. So this is the linear term. And then there's the next term, 1 over 2 factorial, then the second derivative of f evaluated at x0 times this x minus x0 squared. So here's the displacement again. You can keep going adding higher and higher derivatives, higher and higher powers of x minus x0, 1 over n factorial. These terms are getting very small as they are added to the equation. We can make the argument, in fact, prove that if you were to keep all these terms in infinite series, then you can represent f of x in that way. What we usually do is to neglect higher order terms. So we're going to neglect x minus x naught squared and x minus x naught to the end under the assumption that x minus x naught, which will be delta x, is small. If delta x is small, a fraction, say 0.1, 1 tenth, then x minus x naught squared is even 1 hundredth, and x minus x naught to the n is going to be 1 over 10 to the n, so it's going to be very small, and it's very justified to ignore the higher order terms. If we ignore the higher order terms, we get this approximation that is the linear approximation that f of x is equal to f of x naught plus df dx evaluated at x naught times x minus x naught. It's just simply fitting a line to that displacement. 
So now we're going to imagine that we're going to move this parcel in time and use the Taylor series expansion. And if we are making a time displacement, then we can look at our temperature delta T and say that delta T is going to be equal to d by dt of this displacement. But we're also going to be looking at, because we're looking on this field, dt dx times delta x plus dt dy times delta y plus dt dz times delta z. So what we're doing here is we're looking at essentially all the partial derivatives, all of the ways in which the temperature can be changed. Of course, we are going to be assuming that the increments over delta t are small and we can ignore the higher order terms, which are just simply represented out here. Again, as we look at a change in the temperature, we're going to relate this to a change that's purely in time and then a change that has the representation of space here. The total differential or the total derivative of the temperature T depends on T, X, Y, and Z. So delta T is as we represented it on the previous view graphs. We're going to divide by delta T and assume that delta T is small. And when we do this division by delta t and take the limits as both delta t and delta x go to zero together, then what we get is this equation that the total change per unit time of temperature is equal to the partial derivative of t per unit time plus the change that is associated with the spatial variability. So here is dt dx, the variability in the x direction, dt dy, the variability in the y direction, dt dz, the variability in the z direction. This term here, dx dt, is the velocity. So you can see here that the velocity times this gradient in dt dx is what is at a point at a fixed point in space, there is a change of temperature that might be due to local processes, perhaps such as radiation, plus the changes that are going to be associated with how the wind is advecting, which we call this process advection, how the wind is transporting information about the spatial structure of the field. Here in this version of the equation, we're going to recognize the dx dt term, the dy dt term, and the dz dt term as our velocity vector, so u, v, and w, and we're going to introduce this convention of d by dt is equal to big D by dt because it makes it a little less likely that we will confuse this d with the delta of the partial derivative. So this is done for clarity. This is simply a way of notation of saying, okay, here is the total derivative. We are not just looking at the partial derivative. And this is the definition of the total derivative, which is also called the material derivative, and these two terms will be used interchangeably. And just to make the point, the material derivative and the total derivative are one and the same. Going back to our points of view, big D by dt describes a Lagrangian viewpoint the material derivative expanded out in terms of the partial derivatives that have the local change due to d by dt, the partial d by dt, and then the advective changes, heterogeneity of the field being brought to a point by the velocity is the Eulerian viewpoint. So this Lagrangian viewpoint is following a parcel. If we were following a parcel and Looking at the change in the parcel, that's what the total derivative with respect to time is. 
if we're sitting at a point and looking at the change at a point, then we end up reducing or breaking apart the different ways that the changes at that point can occur. If now we return to the momentum equation. This as written was written from a Lagrangian point of view. And remember, in the beginning, when we used the parcel and we defined the Lagrangian point of view, we said it was a very good way for theoretical understanding and deriving the equations. In the Eulerian frame, we end up rewriting this equation as the partial view with respect to t is equal to this minus u dot del u. This form of the equation, I have gone back to the previous definition which we wrote out in terms of partial derivatives and written it in vector notation using the gradient term and then the pressure gradient force, the viscous force, gravity force, Coriolis force, and the curvature terms. In this form of the equation we have introduced this term here which is now called the advection and it is a nonlinear term. It's nonlinear in the sense that this is U operating on U. For a tracer, for instance smoke or ozone, then it would be U operating on some scalar which would be say smoke or ozone and it would become a linear equation. But in the momentum equations this is the nonlinear advection of wind velocity. In fluid dynamics, this is often called convection, but in meteorology we generally call this term advection and we reserve convection for that process in which heat is applied at the surface and then there is vertical motion that is responding to that heat. We usually call that process convection and this process here called advection. And with that, I conclude the introduction to the material derivative.